Well, hi there. This is Home Wizards, where we love to help improve your home and improve your life. I'm Cindy Dole. And I'm Eric Stromer. <laughs> and we love, to, <laughs> we love to come up with things that you can do that are uh, really easy. To, yeah, not overwhelming, not so scary. To tackle. That, well, you don't want to be intimidated into inaction. To right? inact. Right. We want you to act. Yeah. We want you to be an activator. That's right. <laughs> we know it. So I thought we could talk about some quick summer-ish DIY projects that man or woman, we can put it together. and Boy feel, or girl, you know, man or child. Yeah. Puppy dog. We can all do these or things. Or koi. Come along, friends. Let's try. So, what do you think? What, what's a good thing to start with? You think this weekend? Well, I got to tell. I, I think one of the best things you could do this weekend for very little money and very little effort would be a trellis. Love it. You know, it's a, it's an easy thing to do. Like for example, I've got a, a really viney rose that is pulling away from the stucco in the front of my house. Mm-hmm. It's a perfect opportunity for me to construct a trellis. And you know what? You, all all you got to do is get some one by. And, and it's very inexpensive. And you create like little rectangular shaped boxes that are, you know, maybe five feet tall by two and a half feet wide. And then you're making these boxes with, you know, right angle metals on all four corners. And then some uh, hardware cloth, which is just square metal shapes that are, you know, in, in, in a sheet. And then you just cut that with tin snips and bam, staple it to the front of the trellis. You can paint it a pretty color that goes with your house. Might even want to match your front door, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, like melon. Like melon. <laughs> and then you want to attach that to the stucco, either drilling into the stucco and using um, you know, some kind of a wall anchor system, or you can just lean it against the wall at an angle, and, and it'll support the weight of the rose just fine. Now, I have a question, though, about yeah. drilling into stucco, because yeah. we did this with our um, living plant, quote-unquote, you know, air plant curtain mm-hmm. we had stucco and so we drilled into the stucco but then we realized oops we didn't want to go there we wanted to go over like a couple inches so we want to prevent having an oops in the drilling of stucco sure right yeah what do you suggest well you mean in terms of making a mistake and drilling yeah. it? well you can't really mess it up that bad even if you drill a hole you can patch it either with caulking or a little more stucco patch on on your finger and just put it up in there it's not it's just essentially cement Okay. And it's easy to fix it. So when we're doing our trellis, don't worry about making an oops. No. As long as you have paint color of your existing house, you can patch anything. You'll never know the difference. You can can take a chance. Take a chance! Take a chance on me. Take a chance on you. (laughs) This is a song. Wait, is that ABBA? (laughs) Yes, it is. Oh, boy. (laughs) Now, what do you think in terms of um, the the metal mesh netting? I mean, because that's something that I always deal with is that the flowers or some of the leaves might be very fragile. Mm-hmm. I mean, certain vines are really sturdy, and they don't really need much support, but others, they can get droopy if the flower is too heavy or if the leaves are too tender. Yeah. the hard, You know, the hardware cloth is great. I mean, it comes in varying sizes of space in between the metal tines. You can get the bigger ones. So it's like chicken wire, but it's not. Like, yeah, it's like chicken wire, but with huge holes, right? Mm-hmm. So they're maybe an inch or two apart, you know, mm-hmm. and... and um, but they, they call it be, fabric. Yeah, they call it hardware cloth for mm-hmm. some reason. I don't know why. It always kind of threw me. Mm-hmm. Where's the hardware cloth? You're expecting it to be like a nice mm-hmm. fluffy terry cloth towel, but it's a, it's a rigid piece of metal that, that would go inside of cement before you pour it to keep it from cracking. And and it's actually, um, it's for example, if you have a viney plant, you know the, the green tape that you use, the plastic tape? Sure. Gardening tape. Gardening tape. You could just tie your, your vines right to this stuff, and it, and it works great. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm wondering the working with this uh this cloth. You got to wear gloves. I was going to say it looks kind of it looks kind of angry. It looks it, kind of like it could hurt you. It can. And so if you wear gloves you're fine. If you don't you absolutely will cut your hands. Because this is thick metal. Very very sharp. And metal. then with a staple gun, you can hurt yourself with a staple gun too. You can, but that's not quite as bad. You, if if you feel uncomfortable using a staple gun, you can just use, you know, a hammer and those little those little things that are shaped like a, an upside down U, mm-hmm. and then you pound those, and like you would hold hold wire to a wall with them, for example, you could fasten the hardware cloth with that stuff. Okay, It'll work just fine. Sounds like a fun. Don't idea. be afraid, little fella. I'm, I'm we'll not get afraid. This. I'm that, not that's afraid. A, that's an easy fix and an easy do. 
And right. I love I love how we can make it our own. It can be a customized thing. You can paint it with flowery patterns on it. You can use your artistic sensibilities and make something new and exciting. And now you have a living wall, too, because a lot of times we all have those spaces where maybe you want more privacy, yep. right? And you just want nature to kind of create that quote-unquote fence. Yeah. it's You know, and, and I love any time you can provide screen. Mm-hmm. We saw so much of that up at the San Francisco Garden Show a couple of months back. You know, a lot of use... Uh, when it came to you know these living walls where where you'd have sort of a screen scenario occur or even even these things that we're talking about building this this kind of a trellis that's very rudimentary you paint it like a lime green or some really primary color and it really kind of offsets the nature that's against it and it just looks great give it a try that's something you could do so the papa color you know using that a different shade for your trellis or your backing uh huh and you could versus, even spray you could even spray the hardware cloth an, another color all together versus the flower sure. shade of color so that's think right. of that yeah what about something to help us with our outdoor space let's say that we want to get into the whole outdoor kitchen outdoor living experience but we don't have really a countertop or we don't oh. have a, we don't have a bar you know what's great you can make one of these little little sort of uh, like imagine a room service cart, but for for the outdoor, and you're you're essentially just using pine, you know, one by pine material that you can create a nice little countertop with a an, a frame around it, and then slats on top of it, and you're essentially building a little table, but at the very bottom you're facing the legs with another piece of one by on the bottom, and then coasters. Mm. Are on so the, it's a on cart. The, yeah. Exactly, and you can roll it around and, and uh, no, I'm sorry, ca- I always get that confused. Ca- casters are the wheels. Casters, uh-huh. Coasters are what you put your drink on. That's okay. Either yeah. way, yeah, yeah. we get room service, though. You get room service outside. <laughs> you, can, you can use it to push the you know, the cocktails around or, or serve food on it or just have it sit as a, as a, as a beautiful little outdoor garden area, even a potting bench. And then you could put your galvanized tin with the ice on top, and that becomes Man, your, your and traveling then, sink. And, and stain it like in, with a nice light blue color or something that sets off against a, a house. Mm-hmm. It, it just looks great. So very, that, very simple So that could be our, uh, our, our solution if we don't have enough space to kind of spread out uh, when we're working out in the uh, in that, the patio that's area, that's right, or my cooking. friend. Yeah. That's right. And this also could work as um, a garden bench too, couldn't sure, it? Sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, that whole potting bench idea really is a nice thing on the on the exterior of the house, because I often find that I'm I'm trying to plant these plants and I'll put them up on the picnic table and mm-hmm. then the dirt and the soil get on the picnic table and you're watering them and the table always gets wet. It's it'd be a, it's a nice thing to have some area that's to designated your, specifically for just for your chores stuff yeah yeah cool yeah and let's not forget wine and 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 beautiful you know things that you serve on this card <laughs> it would be glorious cool yeah how about doing something with uh, those coffee bags another thing that we saw at the garden show where people are using that fabric that classic fabric that you see uh, coffee beans shipped in you know to Starbucks or wherever you go, and using using that as a platter. Yeah, that's cute, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And you can just have the soil right in there, and they they leach water. They don't retain it so much, and it can be just a great little bag, essentially. Of it's some a burlap sort of, bag. Yeah, a burlap right? bag of a flowering plant or a vine or whatever you can think of. And it's cool. And, they, and they can sit anywhere. You know, you can move can. them around easily and easily water them. And it doesn't matter if they get wet. And because they're made from this um, recycled material, they're they're weather resistant. They're lightweight and. They have a kind of an organic look, don't they? They really it, do. And and I what I love about them, they can be part of a living wall, you know, because a lot of times you'll see these these, you know, woolly pouches that are used mm-hmm. to hold these living wall succulents, for example. You could actually put these bags on a wall. Well, it's of, a living wall on caffeine. Yay! <laughs> How about that if it's a drip system, right? That's right. <laughs> the puns don't end. Yeah, no, that that's a cute idea. So it, we, it almost looks like uh you know, when you put the the candles in the bags, what are those called again? For the, the outside the, parties. Oh, the luminaries. The luminaries. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. almost like that, but with plants. So you just cut the you cut the bags in half lengthwise, and you could just you know use them for your smaller pots. I love that. It's a, it's a great idea. Platter and a coffee. Platter and a coffee bag. All right. Well, when we come back, we have some more fun things to talk about, uh, from coffee to uh, some things you might want to do just to enhance uh, the place that you live. Like, wait a minute. This did you see this raised bed with a galvanized tin? Yes. Okay. So that basically, instead of making your own 
uh, raised bed with wood like you uh-huh. have talked about in the uh-huh. past. This is getting a couple of galvanized tins and you stack them up on top of each other inside and now you can section it off. Gorgeous. And you can have Gorgeous. that now as your space for, uh, for growing vegetables or whatever That's outside. It. Yeah. So I'm thinking that these are some great projects we can do this weekend. So you helped us with the rolling cart. We got the uh, coffee bean bag for our planters. We have a trellis. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that we're missing? Well, you know, if you want to do something really simple, just get some clay pots, plant some beautiful herbs in them, and then you can use chalk or paint and just paint right on the pot. Amend it with some great decoration. Say you're growing chives. You, You write chives with chalk on it. It's great. And I think the kids would love doing that. It's this Saturday. Next Saturday, next Sunday, whatever day <laughs> you choose, day. <laughs> maybe two hours of your time, you're done. Great. Love yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Well, we have more fun things to talk about. The summer wind came blowing in from across the sea. Welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards. Yeah. And uh, boy, I'm learning some stuff today. And me too. Yeah. Eric Strom or Cindy Dole, we love to we'll help you learn and improve your home and improve your life. And there's a lot of DIY projects. I think, you know, you being on TV a lot, you see it and you go, I can't do that. Or come on, you know, that was fancy schmancy stuff for TV. But we like to break it down and make it simple and, and doable. Right. Yeah, yeah. And keep in mind, too, when you're watching these fancy shows on TV, there's about 25 people working on the on the project you think one guy's doing but here we're trying to give you some great information where one guy one girl can do it themselves that's, <laughs> that's what we're all about you don't need no you don't need no fancy tv yeah. crew at your house no no so here it is it's time to enjoy the outdoors more and so let's talk about some things you can do right now today or tomorrow this weekend to um to feel i don't know successful yeah to feel proud yeah, and it always makes you feel like you got some self-esteem at your house, and then you're you're excited to have people come over and go, "Hey, look at what I just did! I made a trellis Yay. for crying out loud! Yay. I learned it from the home wizards." <laughs> so let's talk about a great thing you can do to your table, your outdoor table. We've seen this a lot, uh, where you use an old uh, picnic table, or maybe you find a scrap wood table from uh, a garage sale, and somehow you're going to cut out the center and make a nice little pot or a bed, if you will, for succulents. Yeah, and can, let me tell you how to cut the center out, too. So, say, for example, you have a picnic table, and there's a plank that runs down the center. You're going to find yourself some container that you'd like to use. It can be like a galvanized, a galvanized tin, tin <laughs> right? Or a plastic or, tub. Or a plastic tub, anything, but find that Or a gutter. Shape. Yeah. Right? A gutter would work great, actually. Yeah. And so you're going to find that shape, and you're going to want to make sure that the, the, the hole that you cut is not too big so that the top rim falls through so trace out that shape and then maybe measure in a quarter of an inch and then make another line Mm -hmm. in that rectangle you'll you'll go in the corner with a drill bit and you'll make sure that that drill bit is big enough to accommodate a reciprocating saw or jigsaw that can go through that hole and then you'll simply cut along the line that you made with a with a jigsaw and if you have trouble getting around those corners then just drill four corners and then cut straight lines to each circle in that corner and then you'll have your cutout and then you just drop your your galvanized tray right in there and then your soil and your succulent or whatever plant or flower that you want to have and, and you bang are, there you go. and you have a drainage hole in yeah, there yeah you go and you want to have a hole or a maybe drainage. a couple of them right and i uh, highly recommend uh, succulent soil have you, because when you're... Well, yeah, you know, I... It's I, a huge difference. I heard from our, our lady friend over at the succulent store here that, that uh, the traditional nitro mixes and stuff that you buy, it, it, it has too much alkaline in the soil, so it doesn't really work great for succulents. And, it's and all not about, enough drainage. It's all about drainage, and sometimes if you get just that perlite and you mix the perlite... That's the one. It's not. It's still not good enough for succulents. So the perlite and regular potting mix, it's okay. It's better than just regular. But ask for a specialized cactus soil to use uh, with your succulents. So that's a fun little project that you can do sure real is. easily to to add a look of of summer. Now something on the inside or outside. Have you ever made just a sand centerpiece? I mean, it's so easy. It's just basically a glass vase that you fill with some sand that you might have collected from one of your your trips to the beach or you go to the arts and crafts store. And then in the center, you just put some some candles or shells with candles. 
Great. And you know you can buy that play sand at the hardware store, and it's pretty inexpensive. It's already washed and cleaned for you, so it looks nice and oh, true. Oh, really? Yeah. Play sand. Play sand, it's called. Nice. Yeah. It comes in a bag? or It's what they use to fill sandboxes with. Perfect. Yeah. Have you ever considered making, speaking of sandbox, making your own backyard beach? I've seen this done before, where you basically would almost have a sandbox, or you make a little berm, and you bring in the sand, and then some driftwood, and have a, like a nice low fire pit, and bring in some kind of a, I don't know, beach type of plantings. Yep. That look, you know, grasses, ornamental sure, grasses. Sure, the grasses work great. Yeah, and yeah. so you have your own little beach environment right there in your backyard. Great. Now, the only thing with a sandbox or anything with sand, the cats find their way there. Oh. And it can sometimes become a cat box. Oh, no. So you want to have a cover over it or cover it with a tarp at night if you're, mm. if you're uh, concerned about uh -huh. that. Especially with the kids if they're in there playing and then it's like... Hey, look, it's a kitty almond roca, everyone. <laughs> no good. Ew. Did I tell you that story? <laughs> no, I don't My know. My kid. To... Oh, no, I don't want to hear it. Came out holding a kitty almond roca. No. Yes. Icky. Yeah, I know. Okay. That's what happens. How about doing something? This takes very little effort whatsoever. Uh, if you have a lot of stones sitting around in your, in your yard, your garden, or yep. you can always also from the garden center buy some really great, those lava rocks. Yes. I love those black lava rocks. Yeah, those are pretty. Are they pretty? They really are. Or they have different, they have the different shades and, and types, but for something about the black lava rock, it has almost like a Zen garden look to it, mm -hmm. kind of an Asian fusion thing. Mm -hmm. And so you can do that. You can not only use that as top dressing in uh, your container plants to add as mulch to keep the water and the moisture in mm -hmm. and make it decorative, but save a few more and put it as a nice table topper for your outdoor dining experience. It's a great little project, and you use basically what's what's pure from nature and then maybe cluster it with some moss or some other plants and then some candles and so it looks very pretty and peaceful yeah and I, and, and I gotta tell you speaking of, of mulch uh -huh. again I, I I bought it at the soil place right 25 bucks for an entire pickup truck full of the brown bark mulch versus by the bag so I know. much more, probably four times Gosh, more Gosh, now it feels like such a rip-off, doesn't it, the well, bags? Well, yeah, the only problem is, is that you, if you don't have a pickup truck, there's no way to do it, you know, it's just... It's, or you rent a U-Haul. Or you bring bags to those stores and just bag your own. Yeah, and sell Ziploc for, bags, They'll sell no. you for nothing. Or no. maybe you uh, pay somebody, you, get, you hire a labor person for the day, yep. and they come with their vehicle, if they have one, and, yep. and have them deliver dump, it to dump you. Jump in the driveway, put in the wheelbarrow, move it around the property, not a problem. Speaking of which, i got to do it all tomorrow. <laughs> I know. you got more. i got to do it from 1 to th to about 7. i got to mulch the garden beds. Big party. Eighth grade party mm -hmm. tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, let's see. Let's think of some other great projects that we can do. What about an outdoor canopy? We've talked a lot about how we love these, uh, these shade sails, but yes. you can make it your own. You know, yeah. with getting some of that canvas fabric, right? That's right. Yeah. All you have to do is uh, string it between, you know, three different points. If you have a triangle shape or four, if it's a square or rectangle. And it's relatively easy. You know, you, you're going to want fabric that has a grommet in it, probably. Otherwise, it's probably going to rip or tear on you. So, so you can either have those sewn into something that you buy or, or, or find it where it has that, that already pre-installed. What about some of those uh, plastic tent pegs as anchor lines? Would you like that yeah, or yeah, not? that would be Not, not as yeah, attractive? Yeah, maybe. Or how about the bamboo pole? Don't mind the bamboo pole. The bamboo poles are pretty good? Yeah, yeah. Or even aluminum tent poles? Not bad. A little cold? Not bad. You know, you just, the problem is, is getting them to stay upright unless you put them in cement it's going to be kind of wavery or could you put that in sand could you put some kind of almost like using um pots containers mm. and put sand inside mm. and then put probably, the probably not enough no enough uh, resistance fruit, fruit, i see yeah i would prefer you put it in cement what if we had you, you and your brother standing them. the whole time like <laughs> ten, like tent holder people yeah <laughs> Well, okay, maybe that's a little more. Yeah, the only way to get the po the post to really stay upright if there's tension on them is to then do anchor it to yeah, something. Yeah, more right? more rope coming down. Like a down. tent. Yeah, exactly. Like you're camping. Yeah. See. I'd rather just see you dig and, a, an eighteen me... dig an eighteen inch hole, put cement in the hole with the post and yeah. let it set up, there level it up with your level. That's the best way to do it. I was going to say it makes me think of Girl Scout cookies because we're thinking of camping and Girl Scouts. And... God, I love I love the peanut butter ones. <laughs> 
Oh, the Savannas? Yeah. Oh, the is that what they are? The Savannas? Yeah. The peanut butter? Yeah. Love them. Uh, well, we have more to talk about to help you uh, have your outdoor experience enhanced. What about outdoor speakers? There's a lot to think about yes. uh, before you choose them. And we found some great ones that are out there that some are, need to be wired and some that are wireless. And I've had great ones and I've had horrible ones. Yeah. And we'll talk about that when we come yeah. back. I mean, yeah. it makes a world of difference, doesn't Huge. it? Huge. Having music outside is a, is a big deal. Big. And then also later on, we're going to talk about things to do to cool down your house besides air conditioning. I mean, just things you can do to, to take advantage yeah, of the, the cool mornings. the old world way. You know, who needs who needs a, an expensive air conditioner? No way. Hey. We got some great ideas for you. It's all about just having a, a wet towel and a fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, old school. All right. Well, you're listening to Home Wizards, and be sure to check our website throughout the week. If you go to yourhomewizards.com, we have a videos up there. You can email us, let us know the questions that you'd like us to answer. And, in fact, we answer it with some great videos. Uh, you ask, we answer. Yourhomewizards.com.